All right, guys, what's going on? This is Shot by Flash. You're now watching Game 7. The only place where hip-hop and gamers meet. We're over here at Coexist Gaming, man. We have an illustrious guest today, my guy Ryan. He's a New Jersey native. You know, he has a gaming developer company called 13th Bridge Gaming. So, Ryan, just uh, introduce yourself, man. Yeah, so, uh, Ryan, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so, as uh, Flash was saying, I started uh, this company about two, two and a half years ago with one of my really good friends. Um, I was living in New Jersey, moved out to Oregon. We actually had met in New Jersey. He moved out to Oregon before me. It was just coincidence that we, we met up at, out there. Um, he's got four kids that play basketball, been a long time gamer. His four kids also play a ton of video games. Mm -hmm. And we were talking one day and he's like, you know, it's crazy. My kids don't play basketball video games. Um, and we started talking about why that was. And um, we we're like, hey, you know, maybe we need to do something to, to make a different type of game that might appeal to you know, kids like his and a lot of people that are playing games today, but don't necessarily want the sports games that are being offered. So Run the Court, the game is uh, two on two arcade style basketball. Um, it's multiplayer, it's free to play, uh, has your typical season pass, just like a Fortnite or any, any game like that. Um, but also does have, for those players that are interested in digital ownership and wanna have ownership of characters, it does have NFTs that you can um, purchase and you can kind of have character specific NFT progression ladders. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got opportunities to earn, opportunities to collect, but um, that, if you don't pay, if you're on the free to play, or you just do a typical season pass and you, you don't have an interest in those things, you don't have to participate. So yeah, it's, uh, like I said, been in development for about two years and we're um, hoping to launch it in uh, second quarter of 2023. Second quarter, you heard it first, man. Yeah. Now, for for the casual gamer watching, you know, because you mentioned, you know, Web3, uh, uh, NFTs and stuff like yeah. that. Let's break that down, right? You're giving more power, you know, to, to the players themselves. For the characters that they create, you know, uh, the courts that they're able to design and play on. And, you know, like, 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 can you break that down for us? Yeah, so, I mean, a big part of Web3 is that, and as opposed to the game just being centralized and the, the gaming developer or operator owning all the copyrights and kind of being the only person that has, the only group that has ownership, um, you're giving some of that community, that ownership to the community. So if you're an individual player, let's say you're playing a game um, where you're grinding, you're unlocking all this stuff, you're earning, you finish playing that game, you're kind of like, hey, I want to move on to something else. There's really no way if you put a lot of money into that game to kind of recoup that, you know, uh, because you don't have ownership of what you've, you've developed in the game, what you've earned. Right. So with Web3 Gaming, what most games are doing now is you, you have ownership of what, what you, you earn in the game and you can sell that in the marketplace to another player. Perhaps you have something valuable that they want. And, and look, the reality is that in traditional games, the World of Warcraft and stuff like that, some of this has gone on on the side in the gray market before, um, but now it's just a, 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 a new way to do that that's within the game that really allows the community to take ownership of, of what they want, if they choose to. If people want to play in a more traditional way, they can. So this is a skills to win game. That's one thing that's important to know because you have your pay to win games where you know, you're, you're improving the attributes of your character and then you have your skills to win games. So this is skills to win. All the characters are basically balanced. Um, we have a bunch of characters. Um, they all have backstories. Um, if you just choose to jump into the game and play with the character, you can do that. Uh, if you buy one of the character NFTs, what you'll be able to do is you'll get the season pass and you'll be able to get like an NFT pair of sneakers, an NFT dunk animation. Uh, uh, so each amazing. character has their own collection. So you could, let's say you play with uh, Trey, he's one of our first characters. You get his sneakers, you could go ahead and sell them in the marketplace or you could keep grinding for that season and get his sneakers, his outfit, his dunk animation, his taunt, his celebration, nice. all those things and complete the collection. Almost like completing a collection of baseball cards, you know, nice. uh, or something like that. So That's amazing, man. Yeah, when you have the, the complete collection, I mean, theoretically, it's more valuable and it'll only be for that season. So you can take it forward, but no one will ever have the opportunity to get that again once we move to another season. Okay, so and, and on, on Run the Court, right? Like what type of gameplay is gonna be like ready available? Like, is it gonna be just like a play now or you know there's like a campaign like like season yeah or, or story mode great question so uh the way we we kind of structured this is there's this uh it's very story driven there's a central world 
that is evolving as mm -hmm. you're playing the game. So there's, there's this bigger storyline. Basically the story is that there's this exclusive underground basketball tournament. Imagine like, you know, Fight Club meets basketball run by the Illuminati, right? <laughs> so, so you have these very wealthy, powerful individuals that have, um, you know, amassed this talented group of players that are playing. And it's just, it's not the five on five professional league. It's underground. It's financed by gambling and betting on the games. The locations where games take place are very exotic, um, all these like crazy different courts. Um, and, and what you do is you can jump in and play two on two. Okay. Um, it's a tournament format. So we like to call it Sports Royale. You know, Battle Royale, drop 100 people on an island yep. and see who's left standing. Mm -hmm. So for us, we were like, what's the sports equivalent of that? Well, March Madness. Mm -hmm. You know, drop 64 teams in a tournament, let them play and see how far they get. So when you play this game, you drop into this tournament, you play, see how far you can get, and you're unlocking rewards as you do that. One of the things we're trying to do is really incorporate the cultures and the worlds that we know into the game. So that's everything that surrounds basketball culture and really sport culture. You got hip hop, you got sneakers, fashion, um, all these different elements, card collecting. So we're trying to put them all into the game and what you can do, like for instance, if you have currency, you could get sneakers. Um, you can get outfits, uh, streetwear, whatever you want to get. You also can get um, a celebration. Okay. And the celebrations might be end of game celebrations that... You mean, you mean like a taunt move? Yeah, it could be like gotcha. a taunt or something like that. But we also want to, that's our opportunity to really have those touch points with, be it, say we want to do like a finish him from Mortal Kombat yeah, at the yeah. end of the game, right? Or we want to do something that's inspired by a touchdown celebration. Mm -hmm. um, you know, guys rowing the boat or something like that. Yeah. We're going to incorporate all those different things into that. Okay. And then on court, you'll have all these iconic moves that you can you can activate, you know, whether sure. it's a, a famous crossover, a famous dunk, those types of things. So whoever wins the game, you'll be able to like unlock and do, you know, like a taunt move to just, you know, like like show off to, to your opponent, like, yo, I'm nice, this and that, I'm yeah. running the court. Yeah, kind of inspired a little bit by like a Def Jam fight for New York with the momentum meter or uh, an NBA Jam when you're on fire. Mm. You build momentum, you've got a hype meter. And once that's full, you can execute some of these moves. So you might have, you know, some Vince Carter, you know, windmill or, you know, yeah, put his yeah, arm yeah, in, the, yeah. in, in the hoop type of dunk that you have that you have and you can activate that, hit that in the game. Um, now you see guys, now I just need to pause yeah. them for a second now. You see now that that's the difference between, you know, a guy who's just making a game to like collect money from people and a person that's actually a gamer himself. You, you see the games that he's dropping? You <laughs> mentioned Mortal Kombat, you know what I'm saying? Vince Carter, the Def Jam Vendetta. You know, so yeah, man, keep going, keep going. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and you know, speaking of Def Jam and Vendetta, Fight for New York, which were some of my favorite games, and Grand Theft Auto, um, one of the things that we're really looking to do is incorporate the way that Def Jam had, I mean, you had Red Man, you had, you know, you had Bone Crusher, you had like all these, all these guys that were part of that roster. You had Carmen Electra, right? And Kamora Lee Simmons and all these characters that were from the real world. And then you had these fictional characters as well in like this bigger sort of this like, you know, mysterious underground world that was going on with yeah. fighting. So we're trying to bring a lot of that to the basketball side. So we've got fictional characters, but then we're also looking to incorporate, you know, not just, we don't have like an NBA license or anything like that, where we're gonna have all the NBA players because we just want to, we want to really highlight and feature the people that are gonna be part of the game. So if we get, an athlete that's involved or you know a rapper even a designer yeah. or a gamer or someone like that right. we want to put those people in the game and give them a platform for storytelling because this game is about storytelling and so if we have a, a season that lasts three months we want to have a season host and let's say it's you know someone like a Giannis or something like that mm -hmm. right you got Giannis and he can tell his story in in other games he might be a cover athlete but all he gets is a cutscene mm -hmm. in this He'd be able to design his own geography more like a creative director. He'd be able to uh, have his own courts and he might have one that's a, a temple in Greece. Uh, he might have one that, you know, harkens back to like his, his family and the importance of family. He might have one that's, you know, more from Milwaukee or something like that or whatever's important to him so he can kind of tell his story. So essentially the stuff that, you know, like let's say you would have like a Giannis do something like that. Uh, the casual gamer who, who would play this game have the options to do that the same thing, right? 
Yeah, so that's the that's the end goal. I mean, that's the hope is at some point this becomes more of this like a creator's platform, right? Where okay. if you're into ball and hip hop and all the things that make up this game, this is going to allow you to create your player, create your geography, and then try to attract people that are going to come and play in it. Similar to a Minecraft, a Roblox, something like that, where gotcha. you can even create some of your own game rules. I mean, you're a big Rudy Gobert fan, and maybe you want to a block shot counts as a point, you know, mm. or something like that. You can you can do things like that. So we're gonna switch gears real quick. We're gonna get a little backstory of who Ryan is. Who was the first person to put the controller in your hand, man? Oh man, so I gotta think about this. So. I grew up, when I was a kid, I was growing up overseas, so I didn't have much access to, to video games and even like, even like US-based TV. Yeah. Um, so when I came here, I really had no experience. Like I had messed around with Atari a couple times and like tried to bend the joystick to try to get it to move. But um, one of my neighbors had a Nintendo and I was like, oh man, this is awesome. So I'd go over there and, and we, we'd rock out and play Nintendo. And then, but my first system was a Sega. Mm. So I started, I, I decided to, yeah, I decided to go uh, the Sega route. And um, yeah, and I mean, really I started, I was a big baseball fan at the time. So I started out with like Tommy the Sword of Baseball and Sports Talk Baseball. Mm -hmm. Then the first Madden came out and that was like it for me. When Madden and Lakers vs Celtics came out, yeah. basketball and football, I was like, Psh. and then NH NHL hockey, I knew nothing about hockey. The only reason I know gotcha. anything about hockey is NHL. Gotcha. So, okay, now, what was the best video game you ever played, and how, how did it impact your life? Ooh. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is tough. I would say um, I did love Def Jam, the Vendetta and Fight for New York, because I just loved the way they incorporated all these people that were, like, part of my world, right? I grew up in the 90s and I was in high school and college in the 90s and that was like, that was my world. Um, but I would say probably my favorite game, there's been some Maddens definitely along the way. Like if I said I was a franchise, Madden's probably always been my favorite, but. For me, it was, it was, the, it was the Marshall Falk Madden. I think that's 03, oh, yeah, 2003, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. 03 and then so. the next one after that so. was Mike Vick. That was like all time favorite. He was he was a cheat code in that game. It, absolutely. He was unstoppable. Yeah, no, 04 Mike Vick? Yeah, 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 yeah. Unstoppable, bro. Yeah. Crazy. But I, I think Grand Theft Auto 5 might be my favorite game of all. Grand Theft Auto? Which yeah. one? The the latest one. Five? The five, yeah. Yeah, man. I love that. There's so many updates. It's been like 12, 12, 12 years, right? You yeah. still haven't gotten it. I know, I know. They, they, they just keep on update, update. I, I'm thinking we're going to get a new one now. It's just an update. I know, I know. Same game. I know. Same game. That but I love crazy. that. The way you had the story and the three different characters and different perspectives. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. What people don't really realize is like with a, with a game like Grand Theft Auto V, you're, you're in a metaverse of that world. That's exactly. You can do so many things. Exactly. You know, I've watched, you know, like artists like a T Grizzly and he's literally doing heist missions yeah. with people you know he has his own server and stuff like that he has like 30 people of his you know goons and other players and they, yep. you know they do like kidnapping you know yeah, heist, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just 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 like just wild shit in the game <clears throat> it's awesome yeah it's, it's no, amazing I, and the, and that storytelling aspect is so hard to come at it from those different angles and to do it in an open world and i'm i'm much more like i'm more a campaign style player like with likewise yes yeah, i love that and that's likewise. one of the things i want to have in the game because we want to have this central big arc, but the way I kind of envision our game is like Marvel, right? You've got the Avengers and the main storyline, yep. but then you have all these origin stories. So our characters have these like deep, I mean, we have 50 years of backstory written into this. Mm -hmm. Every character has their backstory. Um, they have these like mysterious, like why are they in this league as opposed to being in the professional league? And we want, as we get into this and, and hopefully as we're successful, um, to be able to have like campaign story modes that tell you the origins of some of these players. Right. Play. right, right, okay, okay. So, uh, you know, switch gears again when it comes, you know, this is hip hop and gaming, right? So yeah. like, like, a, like a, what are some of your favorite artists that, you know, you like to listen to while, while playing some Ooh. video games? Right? So I will say this, when I was in uh, college, I went to college up in Boston and all my boys were from New York. Um, we were all from New York. We'd sit around in the dorm and it was like, whatever Clue tape came out that week was we were rocking with. Yeah, that's so, Clue tapes? Yeah. The Clue tapes with the question mark? 
Come on, man. Yeah. Doesn't get any better than that. So it was like when when Fab was first start getting started, yep, F- and F- you had F- Paul F-A-B-O. King, right? And you had Joe Budden was first getting started, and you had those three together. And um, I remember when that that Cannabis vs. DMX mixtape came out. All the Locks mixtapes. One of my roommates was from Yonkers, so he was like everything, everything wow. the Locks. Um, so we used to always rock out to that. Um, now I'm a big Nems fan. Love Nems, kind of a throwback. But I still mostly listen to a lot of the old stuff. I mean, I play Stack Bundles a lot. Stack and, uh, Bundles. Yeah, yeah, Yo, I was not fan. expecting this guy to say Stack. Yeah, bundles. I was a big Stack I, fan. I was in I was in high school, and I swear I feel like I caught onto his music like. Kind of late, you know I mean? like like oh oh six oh seven. Yep. You know that like I started just listening to him a little bit, and then you know like right around I was about to graduate, you know from high school in two thousand eight. You know that's when I you know like he passed, and shit. I was like oh shit, like that was the first time I ever felt like yep. sad for like an artist. Yeah. I'm like yo, like you were so fucking talented. Yo, He's yeah, like right there. Yep. You know I mean, I saying? still listen to like that's crazy. You said stack bones. I still, I, I got, still. I gotta give you that for that. Man. Appreciate that. I give you that for that, man. Shout out to my guy Bino, man. I still Far listen up. to. uh I mean, I'll still put on, I still have all these mixtapes, right? I still put on the G-Unit mixtapes that first came out, the mm-hmm. Beanie vs. Jada, um, all those, so, That's yeah. All right. all right, y'all, so that was the end of the episode of uh, Game 7 featuring Run the Court, 30 Bridge Gaming. Shout out to my guy, Ryan. Yo, I appreciate y'all just tuning into the episode, man. I wanted to make sure that, you know, everything looked and sound correct. You know, it was all fully produced by me. Um, you know, definitely shout out to Coexist Gaming, you know, for sharing the space with us over in Midtown. And yeah, man, we back. We back, you know. Uh, it's been a while. You know, I took a lot of time with this. And we got more episodes rolling out, man. So for everyone that's, that's been tapped in with us, you know, stay tuned in. You know, we got more episodes on the way. We got artists, influencers, gamers, you know, all coming out in the next, you know, Rolodex episode. That's what we're doing, man. You know, shot by Flash. You're now tuned into Game 7. We back, baby. Peace.